right, let's turn again to hymn number 458. 458. Let's stand and sing. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. seated. Well, again, it's a, it, it, it's a wonderful evening, especially for us. Uh, we love uh, our young people, and uh, we gladly and publicly testify of that on a regular basis. And of course, we love our graduates and They've gotten to a place in their lives where we probably uh, shouldn't even look at them as young people per se. These are young men and young uh, women and uh, have uh, arrived at a very strategic part of their lives. We know that not everything we do on uh, this night where we honor our graduates is, you know, particularly comfortable. That's why they're not here. <laughs> but they're... They're about as tight as you can get uh, over there. And this looks a little strange to me, this big wide open gap. And so as an encouragement to our graduates, I'm gonna have our young people come and you're gonna fill in the second role here for Pastor Tom. Would you do that please? So second row, we'll fill it right up and that'll be cool. Or, or third roll or fourth. The, the whole, whole point is we want to fill in that gap. Actually, we probably won't fit everybody in a single row anyway, so how cool is that? Now, doesn't that feel a little bit better? Now, we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll take care of the thing that's probably the most uncomfortable first. You, know the procedure we'll have our candidate our, our graduates come up in just a moment and face you so that we can get a good look at you and then if you one by one would just come to the pulpit and introduce yourself and perhaps give us a snapshot of uh, what you may be doing this summer and even into the fall we'd appreciate that after you're done I will receive you over there I have a gift for you on behalf of the church and once I get all of you over there then I'll pray for you and then you will come back and take your seat, which is much more comfortable now because the two rows behind you are filled with, uh, with, with, your, with your friends. And so 
it, it really is a great, great evening. So if you guys would come, please, and line up here in Venn. I'm going to pick on you, sir. If you'd be the first, come right up here. And uh, if you would introduce yourself and give us a word, that would be great. Uh, I'm just, I'm Ben Allerton. Uh I'll be, uh, I'm, I'm already working at a shop. I'll be working on cars and I'm getting trained while getting paid for it. So I'm very thankful for it. Amen. That's great. You stand right there, buddy. I'm Isabella Nelke, and this summer I plan on going to Muscatine, Iowa for a mission trip to partner up with the Salvation Army. So I'm very thankful for this opportunity opportunity God's blessed me with. And after that, in the fall, I plan on going to pursue a degree in ultrasound technology. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alyssa Vineyard. Um, I will be attending Pratt, Kansas, and I will be studying to get my degree in psychology. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Headings, and I will be going out to New York, uh, <laughs> Port of Life, New York. And <laughs> we have some students back there. <laughs> um, and I'll be going out there to study Bible. Congratulations. I'm going to kneel, but would you stand for a word of prayer for these precious folk? God, you know our hearts in regard to our graduates, and these four in particular are very special to us. We love and appreciate them. We love and appreciate what you have been doing both in them and through them. We love even hearing their names and we'll be rehearsing such before the throne of grace in the days ahead. We love hearing about their plans and even as we do, Lord, we're, um, we're reminded to pray for them that they would stay on track in regard to their walking with you. And I pray that you would bless them in every realm. I, I pray that you would use them in a, a great way. And uh, the different arenas of life that they will be visiting, God, again, I pray that they would be a light that shines in the darkness. I thank you, God, for uh, the privilege that we've had of watching uh, these young people grow and uh, mature into the young uh, men and women that they are. And uh, we are privileged uh, to know them, to love them, to care for them, and to pray for them. So we commit them to your care, and we'll continue to look forward to all that you're going to do, both in them and through them. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I'll have you take your seat again. We could turn most anywhere in the scriptures to find an appropriate challenge and charge for our graduates. And of course, whatever would be a challenge uh, for and to them would also be a challenge and, um, for and, and to the rest of us. I am citing tonight a very familiar passage of scripture. And because of that, I was initially hesitant I'm saying this very positive, especially to our graduates who had the privilege of growing up in a sense uh, through um, Pastor Landon's ministry. I, I would be surprised if Pastor Landon didn't scoot you through this passage a time or two over uh, the years. I'm speaking of Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Would you listen to these verses? Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth that I am the Lord, who exercises loving kindness 
justice and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. I have to apologize to Isabel and Ben. You got Pastor Tom two days in a row. And uh, so we'll have to correct some kind of injustice like that, you know, down, down the road. But again, I'm uh, privileged to think these uh, very special verses through with you for a few moments tonight. I'm noting that the, these two verses revolve around the word glory. Uh, the prophet Jeremiah uses the word five times in just these two verses. He, he tells us this is significant. This is strategic for you. It's, it's strategic for all of us. He, he tells us what we should not glory in. And then he tells us what we should glory in. And you'll be interested in the Hebrew word that's here behind the, our English word glory. It's halal. means to boast, to praise, or to glory in. Ben, you'll especially appreciate this. This Hebrew word halal is most often attached to one of God's primary names, Yah or Jehovah. And so together it is Alleluia or Hallelujah, which is the proper name for your younger sister. We, we refer to Ali as Ali, but that's short for Alleluia. Uh, by the way, Ali, you know what Pastor Tom's going to speak on when you graduate, so I don't have to worry about that, nor, nor do you. And, and the word means praise the Lord or boast in the Lord or glory in the Lord. But Jeremiah is warning us about something. It's possible for us to boast in, glory in, praise something other than the Lord. And so he says to us, and, and, and you can hear and even see the passion in the man's heart. He says, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches. He, he's passionate about this. What's interesting and strategic for you in regard to that is you have now reached a stage in your life where st statistically chances are you will begin to expend yourself on one of these three things. Jeremiah knows what he's talking about, and he nails to the wall the three areas of life that we almost naturally move toward in regard to expending ourselves. Warning. Any one of these three things is potentially about to become your number one priority in life. Warning, one of these three things is about to become your small g God. Now listen, we have great confidence in you for. So I'm, I'm not making a proclamation in regard to that, but again, I'm communicating to you statistically. A lot of God's people, a lot of God's young people, a lot of God's graduates, rather than glorying in the Lord, rather than praising the Lord, rather than boasting in the Lord and the things of the Lord, will choose to boast and glory in and expend themselves on something other than the Lord, something other than the things of the Lord. Now listen, if that worked, then Pastor Tom would be a fool to, miss, to, you know, to redirect you in regard to that. If that worked, if a wise man could legitimately glory in his wisdom, if a mighty man could legitimately glory in his might, if a, if a rich man could legitimately glory in his riches, if it actually worked, then because I love you, I would be amiss in redirecting you, but that's part of the point. It doesn't work. And we have testimony after testimony after testimony that relates that very practical reality to us. 
by the way, you may have heard this from me before, but uh, Jeremiah says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. That's our brains. You know, like things relating to the intellect, even things relating to your training. And wow, training is so good, right? But, but, but it could very quickly become your small g God. You could start taking pride in your training rather than the one who has paved the way for it. So, so uh, you know, Jeremiah says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, that's brains. It says, let not the mighty man glory in his might, that's brute for the guys and beauty for the girls. Again, things relating to our body that could very quickly become a priority in our lives. And again, we need to take care of ourselves, right? And our bodies are indeed the temple of the Holy Spirit if you've put your faith and trust in Christ, but they, they ought not to be what we glory in, what we praise, what we boast of. And then riches, bucks, and so, you know, if we were giving a heading to this, it could be, it, it, it could be brains, beware of brains. <laughs> well, I guess I'm saying that to the wrong group of people, students. Be, be, be careful about brains, and brute or beauty and bucks. Or as Jeremiah again says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches. Well, that's what we should not glory in. That's what we should not boast of. That's what we should not praise. What should we glory in? What should we praise? What should we boast of? And, of course, it relates to directly the Lord and things of the Lord. And specifically, Jeremiah says three things. Loving kindness. I'm going to say a quick word about this. But um, loving kindness, justice, and righteousness. Before I say a quick word about those three things, I want you to note with me God's response. Our Wednesday nighters will appreciate this. We've seen the word in other contexts. Would you consider this with me? God is on eternal record as saying that in these things, when these things are present in our lives, when loving kindness, justice, and righteousness is present in our lives, God absolutely delights in those things. And wow, what a word. I, I'm still... I know that I still don't fully understand and appreciate this, but wow, what a word. To think that you and I have the capacity to delight God. Now listen, if you don't know God, then that'll mean nothing to you. And if you don't love God, then again, that'll mean very little to you. But if you love God, and if you know God, then wow, if God communicates to us those things that actually delight him, then... Again, if we love them, we're going to be drawn to that. What an exciting prospect. This is an amazingly exciting prospect that you and I can actually delight God. And good news, you don't have to wait to be an old man like Pastor Tom. Good news. Some of the greatest delights come from God's young people. Some of the greatest delights come from God's graduates. To think that we can move the heart of God. Who are we talking about? We're talking about the great creator God, the God of the universe. We're talking about that one. You and I can delight him. We can move his heart. Again, what an exciting prospect. In the Hebrew word, this is so cool. I've done this with Mrs. Ann, about the only one that it would be appropriate for me to do this with is my grandson, uh, Max, which is... It's been an absolute thrill to have him running around for the last couple of days. When you really love somebody, you just kind of lean in. If Max was saying something to me, I wouldn't be back like this. I, I would be leaning right in. In fact, I would embarrass the man because I would be, I would just be, you know, right in his face because I love him. God, when these things are evident in our lives, I, I could weep in regard to this. God, God actually moves, not away, but toward. 
And the reason why he's moving toward us is because he absolutely delights in these things. Man, I, I, it, it really gets no better than that. I, I'm thinking, and I, I know you guys are young, but in regard to this earthly sojourn of ours, again, if we actually love him, I don't think there's anything greater than that, living our lives in such a way so that God actually delights in us. And that is what Jeremiah is paving the way for here in this classic text. Quick word about these three things. God delights in loving kindness. In other words, and I'll just alert you to this, and, and it's a word we don't use very often. It's a great word, by the way. We, we ought to use it, but we just don't. Loving kindness. But just to alert you going forward, God's going to have his eye on you. And he's going to be looking for this in your life. And when he sees it, it's going to draw him loving kindness, a beautiful blend of grace and mercy. We see it and experience it perfectly from God. But what's being communicated to us here through the prophet Jeremiah is that as we receive that perfectly from God, in turn, it ought to practically emanate from our lives. In other words, as God graces us, God anticipates that you in turn will grace others. It's one of the things he's going to have his eye on. I just thought you might want to know. Loving kindness and justice. Don't let Pastor Tom get off on a tangent in regard to this. Once again, we have a word that has absolutely been hijacked by the world in which we live. Sad. Justice. God delights in justice. You'll appreciate the Hebrew word here. I love this. The Hebrew word, Wednesday nighters, it's one of David's favorite nicknames for the B-I-B-L-E. Hebrew word mishpat. It means verdict. Listen, I've been looking forward to saying this to you for probably three weeks. Let the B-I-B-L-E be your verdict. Let the B-I-B-L-E be your verdict going forward as you face many things in life and you're wondering, boy, I wonder what I should do. Oh, let God lead you. Let the word of God be your verdict. When you do, God just absolutely takes that in as a sweet smelling sacrifice to him. Awesome. So he's looking for these things in you, loving kindness, justice, and righteousness. You'll appreciate this. We don't need to take some great theological trek in regard to this. I know righteousness is a relatively big word, but you appreciate this. The Hebrew word simply means to be right and to do right. I'm going to talk to the older folks for just a minute again. I think I've done this on Wednesday nights. When I grew up, cartoon-wise, when I grew up, I watched and loved Dudley Do-Right. And that's what God looks for in us. He's made us right, correct? When you put your faith and trust in him, he made you right. And now what he looks for is for you and I to be living right, doing the right thing. And of course, that brings us back to the B-I-B-O-E as well, because that's, th that is ultimately our foundation uh, to everything. So... Jeremiah says, don't glory in man's wisdom. Don't glory in man's might. Don't glory in man's riches. But glory in these things, loving kindness, justice, righteousness. So here it is. It's Jeremiah 23 and 24. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth that I am the Lord who delights in these things, loving kindness, justice, and righteousness. My prayer for you 
your prayer for me is that our lives would be marked by these things. Would you stand with me one more time and we're going to conclude with a final word of prayer. That, that was efficient enough, right? And wasn't it neat that we were just all together as a family? Cool. Lord, what a wonderful evening. Thank you for the privilege of our being able to participate. Thank you for our candidates, for Isabel, for Alyssa, for Bella, for Ben, and others that um, have graduated that uh, are not here tonight. What a strategic time in their lives. And what a privilege it has been for us to think through some things that we believe to be vital, not only for them, but also for us. So thank you, God, for your word. Thank you that you've always got a word for us. And I guess in the end, I'm coming back to one point that we made. And that is that the word of God ought to be a verdict for us as we face the trials and tribulations of life, certainly, but also as we ultimately seek direction and guidance from God in regard to life's most important decisions. Oh, may the B-I-B-O-L-E be foundational to any and all of that. So bless our graduates tonight. Bless our young people. Bless your people in this place, even as we're dismissed. I pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.